these are the D, what is it, D burn? DB burn or herpes or whatever you got. Um, these are, uh, this is the same motor as the American Base uses it. I forget, something FL or whatever. And then also the uh, HDC. Is that it? I don't know. Anyway, it's also audio cue. A lot of people use that motor. Uh, this one was reconed by Rusty Trombone uh, at DC. This is a level 4 recon kit. So, four shitty spiders all rubbing together, making, doing nothing. Anyways, so. I cleaned up the motors. We're going to turn them into 18s uh, with the TI frame, and I'm going to show you how. Here we've got two brand new bells. Two big bells. Uh, these are brand new TI frames. I've already ahead and I've already gone ahead and sanded them with a grinding tool, and then I've also done what we call Mac top assembly which is that we've drilled a second hole pattern simply by using any standard frame and you just kind of put it where you want it line it up where you want it and then you can freestyle it you just gotta get starter holes on there if you're a little off you can just open it up a little bit the best way to do it is of course take it to a machine shop and have them do it on a water jet or a some sort of tool that's super precise and act accurate but uh, this is in my backyard so I just freestyled it and now we'll be able to access a little tool through the window because we're not using screens to bolt and unbolt the top assembly from the motor using the standard 5 inch hole pattern so here's what it looks like on the motor not sure if we should use some spacers. We have some spacers that we've either painted or had powder coated. These are from the Diamond Audio D6. These are just little spacers that go in between the frame and the, the motor. We might do some cool colors. Uh, these need to be dual two. So I'm actually going with a longer coil due to the TI frame so that it has extension. We're gonna use the matte coil which is an eight layer um, flat wound aluminum. Not that flat windings do anything, it's just it happens to be the shape of the wire to fit it in that space. And we're using aluminum to keep it light, not for any other purposes like heat dissipation or crap like that that you might believe. Copper is way better heat conductor. If you ever look at a CPU heat sink, what's it made of? Copper, because copper is awesome. But in this case, a copper coil this large would be way too heavy uh, and it would make it too QE. Uh, it would be good for like a small sealed box, but we want this for a large ported box. So, because the box is already made and we just need to make the subwoofers. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out where the spiders need to be and mark the coil to where I need to put it. And as far as height goes and let these sit overnight I got the Mac hardware in place these are just uh, socket head socket cap screws I forget what they call them anyways they use a hex interface and you can buy a tool like this at Harbor Freight that simply goes in there and then you can take the thing out you can also use a flathead which is this type this is pretty common um, if you do, then make sure you get a hex type so that way the tool sits in there without any top pressure. Because uh, if it's a Phillips, you got to put some top pressure on it to keep it still. Uh, if it's a hex, then you can just get it in there and go. Um, you can also use uh, just a regular hex bolt. Make sure you use stainless. Okay, stainless. Um, not only for uh, not really for strength in this application, but more just because it's not magnetic. 
Um, and then you can use a tool like this to get in there and brush it up. So, also Harbor Freight, like six bucks for a pack of three. They're awesome. So, uh, I decided not to go with any spacers. These are cute and everything, but they're not really necessary. You can space them out if you want to. I mean, technically, I guess this is a heat sink or a Faraday ring if you put it on top, but technically the whole speaker frame is a big Faraday ring if you want to consider that. And it's also a heat sink. It's got a lot of aluminum here, aluminum and zinc. It works great. Or is it magnesium? No, I think it's zinc. Anyways, uh, God, it's late. Uh, I gotta put the terminal in. One precautionary measure that we do, with this is the standard long stem. I think Phi was like, Phi or RE was one of the first companies to start using this one. But um, we drill several holes in the side because we're gonna do triple spiders on this one. So uh, for three sets of leads. And then also we heat shrink this little part because sometimes you don't want it to ground out or short on the frame or even come close to shorting on the frame when you put this installed. So I'm going to do all this before I go to bed and also put a bead of epoxy on the bottom. I'm surprised Rusty didn't put a bead down below, but he did the bottom below it. So, but it failed for other reasons. Good morning. So this is, it's all dry or cured I should say. Um, what I'm going to do now is you can either, you can choose to either build it in, in the frame or out. I'm going to build it out because it gives me a little more control. What I've done this morning is um, taken some spacer rings. Um, also because the, uh, quick note, the cone that I'm using is the blackjack cone and it's pretty deep. So I ended up having to use only the quarter inch spacers instead of the full uh, 0.65 spacers um, that you sometimes see on the big 18s on the the ti frames so um but we're going to do triple spiders and what i've done is i've marked my spacers you just lay them down and where the leads are you just mark it with like a i use a silver sharpie and then i go out there on the grinding wheel and just grind a little notch in them so that there's a little hole in it so that the lead can come out so what i'm going to do is basically lay down a bead of epoxy here and then CA out here and then clamp the ring onto it and then repeat that process until I have three spiders and, and then a clamp on top so that it can the clamp will get on there and not get all jizzed up so and then once I have that assembly this this uh, voice coil assembly with the three spiders in the voice coil then I'm gonna go ahead and glue it and clamp it in place put the cone on and then go from there so a quick note before I trim these spiders uh, basically these don't need trimming however they don't quite fit um, around this voice coil so what I'm going to do is just use a razor and what you do is you just kind of brush the edge and what that does is it kind of frays the end out so that it has loose fingers and then it's that way you don't actually have to trim you just fray it out so that it can fit over the spider or try to fit over the voice coil uh, more easily because otherwise if it's too tight you'll get like some warping in it or and it'll, it'll look like a saddle like that as you put it on and so it never sits uh, perpendicular so it's, it should look like that Let's see if you can see that it's just a little notch but I kept the flap on there to avoid uh, bonding to the bottom or creating a some sort of buildup of CA because you want this to be like fresh and virgin when you go to glue it down so what I'm going to do is I've clamped the, the spacer into place the leads come out of the little notches and then what I'm going to do is go back and do like a, a light bead around the inside there's plenty of room for uh, attachment here so I'm just going to go around the inside and then that way I know that this spider is attached to this spacer. Uh, so when I go to glue it in the bottom, I just lay down a, a nice bead and it'll soak through and grab everything. So, and then I'm gonna repeat this process on all three uh, spacers. 
All right, so it's complete. So all three spiders. The uh, the top one we just we didn't do any notches. We just let it come over the top, and uh, you simply wind the wire, the the lead I should say, around the tinsels, solder with uh, aluminum solder, and then tuck down. And then I like to actually put um, epoxy underneath and on top to encapsulate it. So this should cure in about two hours. I just sprayed it with the accelerator, and I'm going to go ahead and start soldering the leads and then by the time I'm done with the leads I should be able to unclamp and then put the cones on all right so I got the cone on here you want to make a test fit to make sure it, it's gonna work and you kind of want to you know like what I do to your mom I kind of loosen her up to make sure it's gonna fit again when I go to put it in so if it doesn't, I use like a number three, this one's kind of smooth, to ream it out basically. And you press really hard, not too hard, but hard enough to, to change it and open it up. And then uh, when you got it the way you want it and it fits on readily, that's when you want to be able to put the cone on. Because you're going to put a bead down, put the cone on, and then you got to put the clamp. And you want to, you want to do it in a, a pretty quick time. Uh, also, I think we're going to start selling these clamp rings. we got a bunch of them. So, maybe not the, the polycarbonate ones, but definitely the, uh, the white ones. So, this is for 18. So, and that's going to fit on top. And then that way it distributes a bit of the pressure when we put the clamps on. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And, and then repeat on the second one. Okay, they've been clamped all day. I'm, I'm pulling them off now. Basically what I'm doing is uh, pull off the clamps, pull the shim, test it, make sure that there's no rubbing or any problems, making sure that the surround is adhered very well to the frame. Uh, you check that all the way around just by pulling on it, seeing if there's any gaps or anything like that. So then once it's all tested, I'm going to go ahead and cut down the former using the razors. Uh, I think I showed you in another video. Uh, and then I got to put on the inner cap and then it's a good night.